Let's have a chapter seven, work and energy review. I think everybody knows that work is force times distance, but don't forget the force has to be parallel to that distance, or you make the distance parallel to the force. Here's the sun and the earth. How much work does the sun do to the earth? There's the force. But since the earth is moving around the sun, the force is always perpendicular to any distance at any moment in time. There is no component of the force parallel to that distance. So the answer is zero. Now in this situation, we're gonna ask how much work does the force F do to the cart? So you can see that the X component is parallel to the four meters, not the Y component. So we're gonna calculate 8.66 Newtons times four meters, and we get 34.6 joules. Now there's no friction. So what do you think is happening to the cart? It's not going uphill. There's no potential energy change. There's no waste heat because there's no friction. So it must be going into a change in kinetic energy. Assuming the initial velocity is zero, we have no rotation going on here. These little wheels are very small in mass. So we're just going to say one half mv squared. We have a final velocity of 3.72 meters per second. And we can say that this part sped up due to the work done. Let's get rid of the wheels. And now we have friction. We have a block. And it's going to slide, though, at a constant velocity in this case. How much work does F do to the cart? It's still 34.6 joules. But now we can ask how much work does friction do to the cart? Work done by friction is the force of friction times the parallel distance. The force of friction is negative, and it's equal to the parallel component of F because we're moving at a constant velocity. It's backwards, that's why it's negative. Friction does negative 34.6 joules, or we would say we generated 34.6 joules of waste heat. Notice how the force added energy to the block, but the force of friction took it away. Notice that the net work done is zero. Also notice that the change in kinetic energy then is zero. It didn't speed up. What's all this have to do with the Earth going around the sun? As the Earth goes around the sun, the magnitude of the velocity is constant. It's not speeding up. That agrees with the idea that no work was done to the Earth by the sun. The kinetic energy stayed the same. And that's because we're assuming this is a circular orbit. Now here's an example where we're going to look at the area under a force versus distance graph. If we have a cart that's frictionless and I start pulling in this direction with a 20 Newton force, that cart's gonna move this way. And what's gonna happen to the cart because I'm pulling in this direction? It's on wheels, it's going to speed up. When I get to the two meter mark, the force has diminished to zero. Past that mark, the force becomes negative. That means the force is going the other way. So what is happening to the cart in this portion of the graph? What's happening to the cart in this portion of the graph? Think about it for a second. It's on wheels, it's gotta speed up. And then once I'm past here, the force is reversed, it's gotta slow down. Let's look at the graph and find the work done to the cart. Since work is a force times a distance parallel, we can say that the force times the distance is an area. To get that area, we could say 20 newtons times two meters, but it's a triangle, so we have to put a half in front. And we have 20 joules. That's a positive 20 joules, resulting in a positive change in kinetic energy. Now we can break this up into two shapes over here, and we'll have a one half times a negative 10 newtons times one meter giving us negative five joules of work, which means the cart has now lost five joules. The next segment is also negative. It's a negative 10 joules. So the net work done to this cart is positive 20 joules minus 15 joules. So we've added five joules to the cart. Remember, work is a scalar quantity. It's not a vector. These are not directions on a compass. This is just whether we're adding or taking away energy from the cart. A motor produces 30 newton meters of torque while completing four rotations to lift the weight. How much work is done by the motor? If that's a motor and there's a shaft with a rope and that's gonna be a weight that we're gonna lift through a distance, I don't know any of these values. I don't know the radius, the distance, or the weight. How do we do it? 
we're going to have to convert this to rotational terms. Consider that the distance traveled is going to be theta times r. If I bring the r over to the s, I get work equals torque times theta. I use the 30 newton meters of torque times four rotations, but it has to be converted to radians. And we get 754 joules. And we've done many problems on civil machines. We had plenty of labs on this stuff. Here's an example with an incline plane and a pulley system. What do you notice about the IMA for each one? This tells us ideally how much stronger the machine makes us, how much more we can lift compared to what we're pulling with. But that's only if there's no friction. So we should use the distances because the distances won't change whether or not there's friction. Now look at that DE, it's three meters. The DR is only one meter. So we're lifting an object up one meter and spreading that work out over three meters. The IMA is three. Now what about over here? We have a 30 Newton weight, and I'm not really sure how far my hand's gonna go, but I have three parts holding up that 30 Newton weight. If this weight is distributed over three strands, ideally I'll pull with 10 Newtons. And I'll be lifting a 30 Newton weight with 10 Newtons. Yeah, it's still three. But don't forget about the law of conservation of rope. If the pulley rises one meter, then we lose one meter, one meter, and one meter of rope. It all comes out up here, three meters. So we're spreading the work out over three meters. So how do you know if there's friction in the problem? Well, if I told you that with 12 Newtons, and you know the IMA is three by looking at the distances, well, then it's not 10 Newtons, it's 12 Newtons. There's got to be some friction here. So what's the actual mechanical advantage for this incline? We're lifting 30 Newtons with just 12. So the AMA is 2.5. Ideally, it would be 3. Now, there's already plenty of videos on this stuff and worksheets. Maybe we want to try something a little different. We have two blocks on a surface with friction. I'm going to have the ropes and pulleys set up like this. As I start to pull, which one will move first? Think about that. Well, let's just assume that these pulleys are frictionless. Whatever I pull with on this side will have to be the same tension on the rope on that side. There's two tensions pulling this over. The right one moves first. Now we can figure out how hard I'd have to pull. The force of friction static maximum is mu s times fn. That's eight newtons. And now since there's two tensions pulling to the left, I only need four on each part. So I'm gonna to have to pull with four newtons. So does it ever make sense to have a mechanical advantage less than one? The classic example I gave, food fight. But I never really explained why we do this. Yeah, sure, you have a little bit of food, so it's not a lot of force. You can apply more force, but you move a smaller distance and this moves a bigger distance. So what's the deal with using a lever in the cafeteria? You don't get caught. It's not like standing up and chucking the food across the room. Then you move your arm the whole distance. But I can just move my hand a very short distance and magnify my distance without anybody seeing the action. Well, at least that's the life of a seventh grader. Well, let's go all the way back to third grade and try a little magic trick I learned from my next door neighbor, Tommy Antola. I've got this cap of a pen with an invisible rubber band in there. I gotta hook the rubber band. I think, yeah, I got it now. I'm gonna pull out the pen and it's got the rubber band on it and it's pulling and stretching and stretching and oh, it just snapped right out. Boy, how'd that happen? I pull, I pull, I stretch and oh, it just snapped right out of my hand. Okay, there's really no invisible rubber band. It's a mechanical advantage of less than one. It's a wedge. My fingers close a small distance, but the cap moves a further distance. Can you picture an effort force pushing down through this distance? The cap doesn't want to move, so there's a resistance force this way. But as I squeeze, my distance resistance is far. This goes shooting out a longer distance. Thanks, Tommy. Now, I'm sure you remember our power lab where we were running up the stairs. Let's turn it into a car going up a hill. Well, this is going to definitely be different than us running up the stairs in our lab. 
we have a car with a mass of 1500 kilograms moving at 10 meters per second up a hill inclined at five degrees. Could we figure out the power required to do this? Well, we know that power is work for time, but I don't have the work and I don't have the time. But we know that work is force times distance. As long as the force is parallel to the distance, we can group the distance with the time. And now say power is the force times the velocity. As long as we can find the force parallel to that velocity. Well, we know that the weight is 14,700 newtons and the angle is five degrees. Well, we're gonna have a perpendicular component and a parallel component. If we know gravity is pulling down the hill with 1,281 newtons, the force of the engine is gonna to have to make those wheels turn to make this thing have a force of 1,281 up the plane. This force times that velocity, that's 12,810 joules per second or watts. Now I know that looks like a W for work, but now with the unit, it's watts. Don't believe me? Fine, let's do it the old fashioned way. I'll pick a distance of 100 meters times the sine of five degrees is gonna give me 8.716 meters. Now I ask you, at 10 meters per second, how long will it take us to travel 100 meters? 10 seconds. Back to the original power equals work per time. The work being 14,700 newtons times a height of 8.716 meters. I still get 12,810 watts if I round off to the same number of significant digits. Well, where can you find all this stuff that I'm talking about? Yeah, it's all in the chapter notes. I also went over this on some Zooms with kids in case you missed it. So here it is now. Good luck.